Let's talk a little bit about truth. Of the three of truth, love, and justice, I find truth is the one that is easiest to start with because it's the one we probably have thought the most about and have the most uh, language and most uh, psychology and philosophy around truth. The idea of truth is a idea of what we know and knowing what is right. Now, there are many people who will even argue that we can't know truth. And in some ways, that is true. That uh, truth is always uh, a process. And we can only know greater or more reliable or valid truths. The ways of knowing truth is something that I want to talk about. For instance, as you're listening to this talk now, you are making determinations. Is what I makes what am I saying? Does it make sense to you? Is it true, for instance? And you'll have an intuitive sense about that. That intuitive sense was going to be based on a lot of your experience. It's going to be based on a number of factors that you will just sense this is true or it's not true. I don't want to go into all the various factors, but there's a lot of psychology and such about that. But we do know that what one person will see as true, uh, another person won't see as true. And so even though we have this kind of intuitive sense of what makes sense, uh, it's not reliable. Uh, if you want to study this more, and, and I think one of the best uh, uh, studies and uh, presentation of it is a book by Daniel Kahneman called Thinking Fast and Slow. And in it, he outlines a number of errors we make uh, in trying to uh, uh, think through things and how we make these consistently and uh, that it will come to show that using this is not the most reliable way of, of knowing truth. Uh, the second way of knowing truth is just through our experience. And so that what I'm going to be encouraging you to do is to actually try out these things with your own experience. Try to be more truthful. Try to question your own um, beliefs and how do you know they're true? Uh, many things we believe, we believe because we were taught that. Are we somebody uh said that or we read it or something and we haven't uh, many of the things we can't bother to check because quite frankly they're not going to be that important to us whether they're uh, the universe is 3.8 billion years old or not may not make a big difference in your life uh, it is important to some people and uh, you can go and investigate how they know that that's true. Uh, most of the truths you're going to want to look at are going to be affecting your life and how you make your decisions. And so what you need to do is to uh, experience. And I want to show just a few things. Uh, for instance, the way we take in a lot of knowledge is through our eyes. And uh, what we perceive, we imagine, is to be true. But we know through many optical illusions and through many experiments that what we see is not true. And even having eyewitness accounts and having people recount what they saw brings out many different truths. And so we can't rely on even our physical sentences. Uh, we see a line here, we see a line there, which one's longer, we, our eyes will tell us one is longer than the other, but when you measure them, they're the exact same length. Um, our eyes, for instance, uh, if you're looking out at the room, you're going to see that there will be people who look smaller than other people. The people in the back are going to be small. 
uh, we know that that's not true. We've adjusted our visuals to, to make sense of that. But we still see them as smaller. We make the adjustments mentally. So the point is, is that uh, our senses, our experiences also, we have many uh, people's memories are not reliable. And again, uh, I would have you look at science and many of the things that uh, will document how our experiences. But of course, they're true to us. They're real to us. They're something we do rely on and you have to rely on to some extent. But again, you need to know that it is faulty and it is limited. And so if you want to have a good uh, uh, trust in your truth, you need to recognize the limitations of that, uh, of your experiences, of your senses. But you are experiencing this, and I'm hoping that you will now try to apply this, uh, these ideas in your life. For instance, to check your intuitive truth, to check your experiential truth, to see how much of those uh, are based on prejudices, are imitating other people's ideas. The One of the most reliable ways we found to, to look at truth is through reason. And to, in terms of reason, um, science is one of the most validated and reliable of those sources. But again, we find that science is limited. What they find today, they will find something different tomorrow, hopefully more, not necessarily negating what we know today, but expanding on and uh, uh, making our understanding even greater. Uh, you will find that number of scientists differ on their opinions about what is true and using both the science, same scientific methods and experiments. There are different ways to interpret it. The same is true that if you look just at reason, logic, and philosophy, you'll find people come to different conclusions. And so reason is very important. And like our intuition, our inspiration and, and experience, it's something we definitely should use. And in fact, it is more reliable. So if we've had something that we've experienced or we intuit, we can do experiments. We can experiment and say, okay, I'm going to try and be more truthful, or I'm going to try and be more loving and just, and see if I feel any different or see if my life is any better as a result of that, to see if I am able to negotiate and uh, uh, the problems and changes and chance of the world in a better way. So it's, it's a good, it's, it's a something you should use. And to look at science and to see, are people who are more truthful, loving, and just happier? Are those societies that are known for these virtues, do they progress? And I think you'll find, as you look at many of the different histories, and one that comes to mind is, is, is Steven Pinker's work in The Better Angels of Our Nature, Our Enlightenment Now, where you will see that the more that truth, love, and justice are applied within an individual and a society, they progress. And so there is historical, scientific, and psychological support for that. The last way we know truth, and again, I'm, I'm going into detail here, so we won't necessarily need to go into detail later with... Um, love and justice, which I'll do in the, deal with in the last segment. The, um, the idea that uh, truth is often comes through us through our culture. Uh, what is true uh, is, is taught to us. It's, it's what our parents and what our, our traditions and our customs and such have told us is true. And quite frankly, we don't have the time or the ability to be questioning all of that. Uh, most of those truths have survived time, and uh, we need to start with those as a foundation. 
but we also need to know that, that they are also limited. I think within traditions, though, there's uh, as particular traditions that have a special influence and power on individuals. And that is the uh, religion. Religion has been uh, found throughout our history and it's taken different forms and has come through different great educators of humanity. I think religion offers us a great uh, source of truth, but again, and it is it has been uh, an influential part in human history, but again, this is something that we will interpret with our own minds and as you know, people throughout the world have different religions, and even people who of the same religion are often violently opposed to one another about what is true in, in that religion. Taking the same verse or scripture, they will argue and maybe even fight to the death uh, about its meaning. So even though we might say, okay, this is the word of God, we trust that, our interpretation of that is going to be limited. But I think if you're going to uh, look at all of those, I think science and religion offer two powerful uh, opportunities for uh, looking at truth. Now, there are many people who uh, are scientific and they discount religion and people who are religious and discount science. And I think they both are wrong. I think we need both of these uh, knowledge and practice, uh, these ways of knowing truth to balance one another out. And in fact, I think we need to be more scientific in our religion. Uh, many people are not, they seem to turn off their reason when it comes to religion and not use their minds, not use uh, a scientific kind of approach to see what is true and what might not be true. Uh, and, and again, people tend to focus on very narrow parts in the same way of science. They'll look at a very narrow thing and they lose the big picture. So to me, science and religion become like wings of the bird of civilization. And when they are in balance, civilization advances. When they get out of balance, you have troubles. And we've seen that historically, and I think we're, we're experiencing some of that now with the over excess, uh, over balance on science currently. But the real problem is the imbalance between the two of them. So looking at these basically four ways of knowing truth, we kind of intuit it, we experience it through our experiences, maybe our five senses and uh, what our experience has shown us through reason, our science, and through tradition, our religion. Now, we can see that all of them are faulty, but I think if you balance them all together, uh, you will become much more healthy, very much like you need to balance truth, love, and justice if you balance these ways of knowing and uh, give more credence to those things that you find can bring a greater uh, benefit to your life and to your community's life. I think you will find though that of all of those, science is the only one that uh, has some humility and has, has a vehicle for verifying and falsifying its truths. And so even though they might say at one point, for instance, uh, the earth rotates, uh, I mean, the sun is going around the earth, uh, they may then change their opinion based on new evidence, even though that may take time. You know, if you uh, can look through Galileo's te telescope and see 
then you're then you can get this community of verification and so as we can verify those truths then we become at a greater level of um, of certainty about the truth uh, important about all of this so is that we maintain a humility recognizing that whatever we know today about our universe physically mentally or spiritually we hope to know more tomorrow and that we will discover that some of our ideas today are very limited and very um, faulty actually so again to play with that but i think if you have to pick one of these to start with start with be truthful um, no, actually be truthful to everyone that you can imagine and be but first of all be truthful to yourself i think one of the major problems we have is not being truthful to ourselves uh, we imagine a lot of things that are not true we have fancies about ourselves that are not true we get carried away with our own ideas and passions and desires uh, and egos and fail to um, honestly and independently investigate the truth, to look at the truth, which as many people say, the truth can set you free, but without the truth, we're really out of touch with reality. So, but of course, if you're just truthful and not balancing it with love and uh, with justice, you are also going to have problems. So to, as I mentioned in the first talk about having them all balanced, you need to, to see what is missing kind of in your life. Bring yourself to account. Do a little bit of reflection. And this is a bit how you can how you can make these transformations in yourself. So it's a, there's an acronym that I use to remember these steps, and it's called, it's the acronym is ARCS, A R C S. It's an arc, like an arc. So this is kind of the circle of learning. So. One of the things that uh, you can try out is, to help you to progress in your learning is to look at the uh, actions you've been doing, So, which is what the A stands for in the ARC, uh, to reflect on those actions, which is the R, to uh, consult with other people about your understandings, your reflections and actions, and then finally to study, whether it be scientific study or to be reading other people, but to be studying about that, to learn more about it. And then as you do that, then you do new action. And so, for instance, if we're talking about truth here, you can do the action of being truthful. You can reflect on it. You can consult with your friends or your colleagues or family about that. Then you can study about what is truth, because again, we need to move beyond and to study how you can apply the truth. And so I think as you use these, um, these four techniques, or this four process of an arc of action, reflection, consultation and study, you will be able to find greater truth. You'll be able to cultivate your love in a, in a much deeper fashion, and you will be able to uh, uh, grow, develop your potential, become a better person tomorrow than you were today, and to help make the world a better place for everyone. So with that, I'll close this section and we'll finish then the third part. Thank you.